To be a Pokemon. Let's be a Pokemon to do this serious video, huh? It'll add some lightheartedness to it. Um, yeah, so I said in my head, what's going on with my voice? So I was talking the other day about how I was writing about the fear of missing out. And I thought, well, I'm going to read you what I wrote and sort of embellish it a bit with my own thoughts as I go along. But anyway, I was reading about it in this book here, which is fully connected, which is a uh, talks about being um, in a digital age, but mostly relating to the workplace and how um, you should have social health within the workplace to kind of create a healthy working environment. And part of it was the mentioned the fear of missing out, which I used to experience quite a lot. I'm going to talk about what it is, first of all, and then I'm going to sort of talk about how I dealt with it and different things that I tried. So I'm going to read you what I wrote because it's on my phone and it's quite a lengthy in-depth thing that I was writing or possibly quite thought-provoking, I don't know. FOMO, or FOMO, the fear of missing out, is becoming a major contributing factor to the levels of anxiety in people. Young or old, it doesn't matter. The thought that you are not living as much life or as meaningful a life as other people pervades our thoughts and is increasing and is increasingly prevalent in today's modern world. It's not a new thing. I know we have long been sold the better life. It has been a major, if not the main way, companies sell their products to us. Buy this thing and get this sort of lifestyle. Toothpaste equals clean teeth and close relationships. This car equates to you quashing your enemies and being free. Smoking makes you glamorous, sexy or a hunk or something like that. Although the last one now is kind of frowned upon due to its health concerns. But it was a thing, to buy a thing, you achieved this. Also then you might see a friend. Come back. From, they've come back from their holiday and they are all tanned and they are photo album laden and then you're exposed to them going through their photo album and they tell you while they're doing that that it's the third that they've had this year and that they've got one planned for the winter break and you just end up thinking well I hate you I'm so jealous of what you've done I fear I'm, I feel I'm missing out I haven't done that so you were fearing you had the fear of missing out so social media presents this is what I've done this is how great I am where's your Lamborghini at you constantly and it's not just from the people that might be able to afford a Lamborghini like the rock stars and movie stars the people that we did idolize and they were idols sort of above and beyond the reach of normal people it's the people that are going on holiday four times a year it's your friends your family their relations their friends their family that person you met one night drunk and said yeah we must do this again and their friends and their family and everyone that they are connected to so the little net little pathways keep connecting and connecting and you keep getting exposed to more and more stuff that they're doing and you're not doing and you're watching it daily and you're scrolling past it this overstimulation of your envy glands creates a sort of bile and jealousy toxins seep into every element of your life these people have a fantastic time or so it would seem doing everything going shopping pairing their socks taking a shit everything seems really really vital and important in their lives now there are several things that you can do to sort of counteract this or live with it or whatever so i'll tell you about what i tried so at first i tried watching passively like a rock in a stream i sat there and let this tide of input flow over me and round me and tried to let it just wash past without affecting me it didn't work because even over time a stone can erode and this was not just a gentle flow of information it was a torrent of information flying at me second you can is the kind of option if you can't beat them join them celebrate your life as much as they do theirs make everything seem important which is i believe not actually so much as a practice in narcissism but a practice in mindfulness being aware of every situation looking at it under the intent eye of an observer like almost externally from yourself so you might see a rainstorm that's happening like outside and think oh my god it's raining I love the sound of rain on the roof or you might say oh I hope it doesn't thunder I'm scared of thunder post that talk about it mention it it's fine carry on doing that 
and then make seem, things seem more significant in your life in that way by kind of joining in. However, that didn't work for me because what ended up happening is I started worrying about how many people were interacting with that comment or that photo or whatever. So it was kind of became a competition on how to do this thing, how to best portray a thunderstorm on Facebook. But I did do it for some time. I made a celebration of my life. I started it initially just by blogging rather than vlogging what I do now. So I started with a live journal years and years and years ago. And then I started doing it very, very diligently for a good few years. And then gradually I started transferring that to Facebook notes and Tumblr and things like that. Then I got concerned about who was seeing what I was posting in terms of work colleagues and things like that. So I started making it more and more private and harder to get access to. So only the select few that were really interested were bothered to go and look at it. And some people did go and look at it still, but not many. And then that kind of led to the more increasing anxiety about, oh, who's seen it? Why am I bothering with all this stuff? Blah, 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 in my head. So it was kind of like a call and response for validation, basically. You make out the call by putting out a post and then whatever people like and comment and share is your sort of, yeah, it helped validate you personally. So there were two options for me at this point. I could continue to do what I was doing and accept the fact that this neuroses, these worries about likes and comments and shares were part and parcel of getting this validation back. So if I wanted to be validated, I would have to continue posting and would have to continue living in this world. But you could do what I did actually do, and that was to cut off. So earlier this year, I stopped being a so an active social networker. So I stopped being a Facebooker, a Tumblr, uh, Instagrammy, and so I deleted all those apps off my phone. So I got rid of all the apps off my phone so I couldn't get any notifications, logged out on all my computers, tablets and everything like that and just used one source of output and that was YouTube which is how you're watching this now. Why YouTube? Well I don't think there's any moral high ground really in using any one platform to indulge yourself in this self glorification than any other. However this platform is a more fulfilling one for me or this format maybe it's the format the video format and it's for several reasons. It's been a very one-way process for me so far. Um, I create the content mostly for myself so I can collate my memories and, and some of the people watch these videos and stuff but not many and fewer than that comment. It's just me making videos for the sake of making videos and the fact that no one comments and the fact that nobody likes or shares or anything like that doesn't really bother me one, one bit really. There's also being on YouTube and watching YouTube videos, not the instantaneous blurt that you get of Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. People will just say things or you yourself can just say things thinking that you're being clever and witty and you're not really, you're just blurting nonsense. You have to, or I choose to, not upload my videos in that way. I spend the time editing and I normally edit from about half an hour to an hour and a half's worth of footage down into roughly about a 10 minute piece for each of my vlogs. So it makes you really focus on what's important in your life and what you want to share and what you want to kind of squeeze out of that footage that you've got. So making it seem, not making it seem more important, focusing on what was important about those days, those events, those times. And it allows you to reflect on those beautiful moments. Some people might think it's extreme to have deleted all my social networking stuff but it has to be remembered again that I got along just fine before the birth of social media it was even invented. I didn't use it when I was a kid and I was an adult at the birth of the full-on smartphone and the networks that it connects from within it. What I'm saying is I'm not a native to it. I wasn't born with a phone in my hand and I can cope quite fine and I am coping without it. The fear of missing out only can arise in your psyche when you feel that your life is no longer valid or the things that you do are not important or meaningful. You can choose to share it with others and you can choose to interact with others over those networks, over your physical networks you have in real life, over the social networks that the mobile phone and the internet has given us. But what truly does matter is that 
you think the things that you do matter. I hope that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but anyway, that's what I'll kind of write about. What are my conclusions, maybe? So my conclusions are, the method that I've chosen is best for me. I really was addicted to using Facebook and all the other bits and pieces and spent time and time and time scrolling through Tumblr and Facebook posts and seeing what other people were doing. Now I don't do that, but I do scroll through YouTube. However, with YouTube, the channels that you subscribe to and the information you're given is obviously through an algorithm like most things, but it is very much a choice to watch and indulge in that video. So you can read the title saying, you know, ancient documentary on mystic Sumerians, which is what I've been watching about recently, or, and you can choose to click on it and you can choose to watch that documentary or you can scroll past it and not watch that documentary. Whereas the, whereas Facebook and Twitter say a whole sense of something, a whole feeling, a whole instant of a situation in that short text. And the text that you read in that one post will be the whole, the be all and end all of that feeling, that statement. And it's just too quick for me. I think that's what it is overwhelmed with information from everyone and unnecessary information stuff that I don't really want to know about YouTube I choose what I watch and in terms of validating myself I don't feel I need to anymore I feel like a really decent human being now and because I'm not watching other people doing exciting stuff all the time constantly instantaneously I don't feel like I'm missing out on much